Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Ishan, and this is the channel of Power Plant Insight. This video is all about thermal power plant, and we will be discussing the following topics in today's session. Overview of thermal power plant. A very common and basic question that is normally asked that why water is used as a working fluid in thermal power plants. Understanding of the boiler operation and its configuration. How a steam turbine works. what is the importance of condenser in thermal cycles and at last we will develop our concept regarding the plant heat rate let's start the session from the basic definition of a thermal power plant a thermal power plant is a unit that converts the heat energy of the fuel into electrical energy a simple thermal cycle or a rankine cycle using water as a working fluid consists of the following main components boiler or a steam generator steam turbine condenser and a boiler feed water pump all these components works in a closed loop in thermal cycle so before going the, into the details of a thermal power plant let's first understand that why only water is used as a working fluid in thermal power plants technical answer to this question is that water has high specific heat let's understand this in more simple words in thermal power plant steam is generated in the boiler and is used in the turbine or turbo generators to generate electrical energy high specific heat means we can add more amount of energy in per unit mass of steam so less amount of steam will be required to generate the required amount of power with large energy contents on the other side if we use a fluid with the low specific heat then we need to boil more amount of fluid to achieve the required amount of energy to generate that specific amount of power so the fluid of the high specific heat is our main priority for optimum plant operation there are other fluids available that have even higher heat capacities as compared to water but the water has a falling advantages over the other fluids first of all water is easily and abundantly available it is environmentally friendly it can be easily handled and treated as compared to other fluids which are chemically toxic and unfit for the environment let's start our discussion regarding the components of thermal power plants steam generator or a boiler the function of the boiler or a steam generator is to convert the water into steam of the required parameters of the temperature and pressures through combustion of fuel let's understand the operation and configuration of the boiler through a diagram this is the casing of the boiler that forms the outer covering for the boiler internals this part is called as the furnace combustion takes place in this section by using fuel and air as an input tube bundles for the superheaters reheaters and economizers are located in this part of the boiler as a result of the combustion in the furnace section heat is absorbed by the working fluid in the tubes of the furnace which are called as water walls and the process of steam generation starts steam drum is located at the boiler top the main function of the steam drum is to separate the liquid from the vapors vapor and liquid mixture which is generated in the tubes of the boiler is collected and separated in the steam drum saturated steam is extracted or taken from the top of the steam drum and is sent to the superheater section of the boiler for further temperature gain and at last it is sent to the turbine or steam turbine for the production of electricity saturated liquid is withdrawn from the bottom of the steam drum through the pipes which are called as downcomers and as injected into the mud drum which is again circulated in the furnace section for the purpose of steam generation mud drum or supply drum equalizes the distribution of the water into the water walls of the furnace flue gases after transferring heat to the tube bundles passes through the air preheater which main function is to preheat the combustion air for the boiler after passing through the air preheater flue gases are discharged into the atmosphere through the boiler stack this was the basic and general understanding of the boiler and its configuration we will discuss boiler in more detail in the upcoming sessions now let's move toward our next main component which is called as steam turbine steam turbines are used to convert the thermal energy of the steam into mechanical energy let's understand this energy conversion 
in more simple words through discussing the main components of the turbine and some real time images. Generally speaking, steam turbine consists of turbine casing, fixed blades, rotor and rotor blades. Turbine casing, as the name suggests, it forms the outer covering of the turbine. Fixed blades are attached to the turbine casing. These fixed blades are also called as nozzles or diaphragms. Rotor blades are also called as buckets or moving blades. The rotor consists of a shaft with the rotating blades. The rotor shaft extends beyond the casing of the turbine through a bearing case which is coupled with a generator to generate electricity. Now after having the concept of the turbine internals, let's discuss how the thermal energy of the steam is converted into mechanical energy. These are fixed blades that are attached with the casing and this is the rotor and the rotor blades which are attached onto the rotor. When the steam leaves the fixed blades, they which are acting as nozzles, the kinetic energy or the velocity of the steam increases and the steam changes its direction towards the face of the rotor blades. By this, the thermal energy of the steam is converted into the kinetic energy. The function of the rotor blades is to convert this kinetic energy into the shaft work. This results in the rotational movement of the rotor which is coupled with the generator to generate electricity. A set of fixed and rotor blades is called as turbine stage. Turbines usually have multiple stages which depends upon the system requirement. This is the picture of a turbine rotor. By looking to the picture, a question comes to our mind that why the rotor blades of the last stage of the turbine are bigger as compared to the blades of the first stage of the turbines. Answer to this question is very simple. As the steam moves through the turbine rotor, it loses its pressure and thermal energy and ultimately its volume increases. This requires larger diameter and longer blades in the upcoming stages of the turbine to accommodate this increase in volume and extract the remaining amount of energy from the steam. And this is how the rotor fits into the turbine casing with fixed blades and rotor blades. Condenser is one of the most important component in thermal power plants. It basically acts as a heat sink in thermal cycles. It is one of the main component that affects the performance of a thermal power plants. Let's understand the operation of the condenser in this diagram. Condenser is basically a shell and tube type heat exchanger. Steam after doing its useful work in the turbine is rooted to the top of the condenser in the shell side. Circulating water enters into the tube of the condenser through a water box. And after effective heat transfer in the condenser, it returns to the cooling tower as a hot water. The steam condensate collects at the bottom of the condenser which is called as hot well. Condensate from the hot well is extracted through boiler feed water pumps which are basically the high pressure feed water pumps and it's injected into the economizer section of the boiler and the cycle continues. Let's summarize our today's discussion over this diagram. Steam is generated in the boiler through combustion of fuel. Steam turbine converts the thermal energy of the steam into mechanical energy. Generator converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy. The steam from the turbine ultimately enters into the condenser where it is condensed. Circulating water circulates the tubes of the condenser and the hot water again recirculate back to the cooling tower for cooling purpose. Condensate from the hot well is extracted through boiler feed water pump which are high pressure pumps and this feed water is injected into the economizer section of the boiler. The boiler again converts this condensate into the steam and the cycle continues. This is the whole concept about how a thermal power plant works. During the discussion of thermal power plant, heat rate is a term that is commonly used. To have a concept of heat rate, we need to draw an imaginary boundary around the thermal cycle. We can see that fuel is being used as an input to the cycle and power is being obtained as an output from the system. So heat rate is the ratio of input to the output. In simple words, it is the ratio of fuel energy input to the power obtained output. Heat rate shows how efficiently a plant converts heat energy of the fuel into electrical energy. Means kilojoules or energy consumed to generate per kilowatt hour of electricity. In the next session, 
we will be talking about the power plant heat rate and efficiency calculations in detail. In further videos, we will be talking about power plant thermodynamics in detail. We will also discuss about each and every component of thermal power plant in a very easy and simple way, not only from operational perspective, but also from performance side as well. So keep connected for more videos and stuff like that. That was all about today's session. If you find this video informative and beneficial for you, then please do subscribe and comment and share this video. Thank you.